This is Aaron coming at you today. We're going to take a look at uh, some of the big updates to Scratch Track, which, uh, as you already know, Scratch Track is a plugin that lets you scratch inside your DAW. So it lets you use um, vinyl or MIDI controller. Today we're just looking mostly at the vinyl side of things, so time coded vinyl inside the DAW. Um, and I'm going to tell you about some of the other updates, some of the other things that we've done, um, but then we're going to dive into how you can tune the responsiveness of your vinyl setup. Okay? So, uh, First off, some of the other updates, there have been a lot of changes. We added a lot of content, we added some effects, uh, changed the way live scratching works, changed, uh, added cue point support, changed cue point support in a few different ways, uh, changed the crossfader um, because of industry changes around how MIDI controllers handle crossfading a little bit. So all of that is coming in other videos. Stay tuned, big changes, make sure you keep up to date. Okay, today we're going to take a look at, in particular, at the vinyl control panel, at all these settings and at the advanced settings down at the bottom. And we're going to look at four different tests that you can look at to make sure that you are up to maximum responsiveness on your turntable. Okay, the four tests are holding the turntable uh, so it's stopped, moving it very slowly, moving it very quickly, and then a half rotation test. Okay, so here's Scratch Track. You want to click on the vinyl button to open it up uh, and then click on advanced to open up the advanced settings and you'll notice you can drag this entire control panel off onto the desktop so that you can look at it while you're messing around with the settings which I advise. Uh, taking a look at the control panel uh, you'll notice there's there's vinyl input selection I'm going to assume you've already figured that out if not there's other videos on it. The gain knob up here is for if you have a very quiet turntable and you need to bump the gain so you may need to adjust that a little bit. Once you can see an input uh, then you you know you're in uh, a good place. Okay, so test number one is a stopped turntable. So you want to hit play, but then you want to just hold it right where it is. When it's in this state, there's a little bit of static that's going to be getting through to the plugin. You want to make sure that that static is not being interpreted as movement. So if you do this and you hold the turntable and it's kind of bumping around, Then, then we have to fix that. And the way we fix that is by moving the cutoff knob up uh, or by using a noise filter or some combination of the two. So just for a test, you can turn off the noise filter and take the cutoff all the way to the bottom and then hold the turntable stopped and you will probably get a little bit of motion. If you turn the uh, noise filter back on, that should disappear. And then you should be able to turn the cutoff up a little bit if you need to. You can even try like tapping on the table next to the turntable and see if you get jumps. You can't get rid of this entirely, but you can go a long way towards getting rid of those sorts of things. So somebody bumps your table and it doesn't, you know, jump the way you don't want it to. So once it's fairly stable while stopped, you're going to want to try to move very slowly. This is test number two. When the, when the turntable is moving very slowly, it's also got a very low signal. So if you move slowly and you don't see the turntable moving, you're going to want to bring cutoff down a little bit. You may also try taking the noise filter sharpness up a little bit. Additionally, uh, you should take a look now at the control filter. If you're moving very, very slowly and the control filter is off, you'll notice it kind of bump forward every once in a while. So it'll be stopped and then it'll just move a little and stopped and move a little. <laughs> Turn the control filter on and that will smooth out this response so that now when you move slowly forward it's a smooth forward motion and the same thing going backwards. Okay, test number three is moving very quickly. Now that you've got a good response moving slowly, try taking the turntable and going very quickly back and forth. It should be able to keep up. If you, it doesn't feel quite as responsive as you want it to be, then take the control filter and move the frequency up or the bandwidth up. So doing that allows for quicker and quicker motion, but sometimes at the expense of the very slow movement. So go back and forth a little bit, try it fast, try it slow, and play with the control filter until you get it where you think it feels right. 
And then finally, our fourth test, we call the half rotation test. This is uh, very typical. You can see DJ Cubert doing this, for example, uh, early on. He's got a video where he compares Tractor and Serato time code to see which one's better. And, you know, they're the same. <laughs> his, con his conclusion is they're both uh, quite good. You can stack this one up against those two and see that it's, it's just as accurate. The way, um, the way that we do this is simply by holding the turntable right where a sound starts and then uh, move it a half rotation forward and then bring it back the same amount and make sure that it's still in the same place. You also want to try it with, instead of moving it forward with your hand, letting go, watching it move half a rotation and then bringing it back. Okay, do this a few times, make sure that the sound is right where it's supposed to be. If not, in other words, if you get slippage, if you do this a bunch of times and, it, and the, the sound moves meaningfully forward each time or meaningfully backwards each time, then something's not right in your uh, noise filter or cutoff usually. You want to bring your cutoff down, tweak the noise filter a little bit. Um, you, can, you can move the control filter a little bit too, but if you've done steps one, two, and three properly, at this point, you should be able to verify that there's no slippage and you're good. Uh, and that's it. Once you're to this point, you have a fully tuned up turntable. It should be professionally responsive and ready to go. Um, that's all. Stay tuned for more updates.